hello people in this video we want to look at the cell line culture for virus okay so where exactly we are we started off in the last video with cultivation of virus we saw how and all virus can be cultivated or isolated animal inoculation uh, suckling mice details we have seen egg inoculation in chick embryo embryonated uh, egg we have seen the details of which cavity what has what can be grown etc then in tissue culture we saw organ culture where like um, tracheal ring culture for isolation of coronavirus explant we saw adenoid explant for adenovirus now we are moving on to cell line because this is a very elaborate topic we are making a separate video out of it cell line okay so first let us look at the preparation of the cell line so basically tissues are taken they are digested and they are dis dissociated into individual cells that is the first thing that they want to do so take the tissue dissociate it into individual cells so how will you do this by using some uh, proteolytic proteolytic enzymes like trypsin collagenase etc then you will do uh, after digesting it with these enzymes you can shake it and uh, they will dissociate into individual cells okay so basically how this is done with proteolytic enzymes and like trypsin collagenase and then mechanical shaking then the cells are washed counted suspended in viral growth medium so you are taking these uh, uh, cells into a viral growth medium you are first washing these cells counting the cells you are counting the cells can you imagine you are counting the cells then you are suspending them in a viral growth medium which contains balanced salt solution okay there will be essential uh, amino acids vitamins etc in this viral growth medium so you can assume in this uh, we have put the cells on on a viral growth medium same thing drawn here this is a mono layer sheet like this it is sitting on what viral growth medium okay so basically what will this viral growth medium have some essential amino acids vitamins salts glucose there will be some uh, you will supplement it with some fetal calf serum antibiotics okay even antibiotics so because you don't want bacteria to grow then you will use uh, a buffer to maintain the ph at 7.2 to 7.4 so you will use what uh, a buffer bicarbonate right and phenol red is added as a ph indicator so they are using phenol red as a ph indicator so that everything that's why it looks a little red here okay now we are moving on to the tissue culture flasks so this is the preparation guys so tissue culture flasks so viral growth medium containing cells is dispensed in a tissue culture flask so this is the tissue culture flask right then mono layer sheet formation we are moving on to the next step guys wake up we are going to the mono layer sheet formation how is it going so far are you able to understand what we are discussing we are preparing the cell line first of all we are just preparing the cell line so first what we saw we took the tissue we digested it into individual cells then we took the viral growth media lot of added lot of glucose amino acids vitamins uh, fetal calf serum we buffered it with bicarbonate to maintain the ph we added a uh, phenol uh, red indicator to it then we took a tissue culture flask and dispensed or dispensed this viral growth media into this tissue culture flask now we are going into mono layer sheet formation okay good so mono layer sheet formation in this what happens uh, on incubation the cells adhere to the glass surface of the flask and they divide to form a confluent monolayer sheet of cells within a week covering the floor of tissue culture flask so basically on incubation this happens they are saying it will become a monolayer uh, the cells are all one layer incubation the tissue culture flasks are incubated horizontally see you can understand this flask is horizontal right it is ho incubated horizontally in presence of carbon dioxide so definitely the lid is closed you can see here in carbon dioxide either as a stationary culture or a roller drum culture so either stationary or you can roll it rolling of the culture bottle in roller drums provides better aeration which is useful for isolation of fastidious viruses like rota virus okay so that was about incubation guys so you will incubate it then it will become mono layer uh, in the presence of carbon dioxide horizontally either stationary or roller drum so basically the roller will provide it a little more aeration which is useful for isolation of fastidious virus like rota virus so guys we are done with the preparation of cell lines we are done guys wake up we are done with the preparation of cell lines cell line is ready okay now let us go to the types of cell line 
So types of cell line we have uh, primary cell line, secondary diploid cell lines and continuous cell lines. Continuous means it will be cancerous cells, they will be immortal and dividing. So this will be continuous cell line, okay. So what is this primary cell line? What is secondary or diploid cell line? So let us look at that, okay. So cell line cultures can be classified based on their origin, chromosomal characters and maximum number of cell divisions that they can undergo. So primary cell lines are derived from normal cells freshly taken from organs and cultured. So these will be freshly taken, these are normal, okay. They are capable of very limited growth. They will have very capacity of these primary cell lines will be very limited growth, okay. Limited growth and they can divide only 5 to 10 times, okay. 5 to 10 times they can grow. These are normal tissues, okay. They maintain diploid karyosomes. So they are diploid, right, diploid karyosome. They are useful for primary isolation as well as growth of virus for vaccine production, okay. Examples here you can have monkey kidney cell line, monkey kidney cell line, guys, example, we are discussing examples here, monkey kidney cell line, human amnion cell line, human amnion cell line and chick embryo cell line, chick embryo cell line, okay, is that difficult for you to understand, shall we write the names here for examples, you have monkey kidney cell lines which are useful for isolation of mixoviruses like example influenza, enteroviruses, adenoviruses. Human amnion cell line and chick embryo cell line are all the examples for primary cell lines. Okay, is this fine guys? Let's move on to the secondary or diploid cell lines. What do you say? Okay, secondary or diploid cell lines, they can divide up to 10 to 15 times, okay, before they undergo death, senescence, okay. So 10 to 15 times these can divide. How many times could primary cell lines divide? 5 to 10 times they can divide. These can divide 10 to 15, 50, 50 times they can divide, okay. So basically these are also derived from normal host cells only, they maintain diploid karyosome only. Examples here are diploid cell lines derived from human fibroblasts, they are useful for uh, uh, you know some fastidious organ organisms. Let's give the examples here. Example you have human fibroblast cell line. Okay, Ex excellent for the recovery of CMV. What is CMV? Cytomegalovirus. Cytomegalovirus is what virus? DNA virus, herpes virus. Yes, it is human herpes virus 5. Okay, so human fibroblast cell line, they will use for recovery of cytomegalovirus. Then similarly, you have something called as the human embryonic cell a lung cell strain, human embryonic lung cell strain. Guys, uh, the MRC5 WI38, these are human embryonic lung cell strain, okay. What are those? MRC5 and WI38, if you can remember these names. So these are useful for the preparation of vaccines, vaccines for rabies, chicken pox, hepatitis A, MMR vaccines, for all that you can use this. They support the growth of spectrum of viruses like uh, herpes simplex virus, cytomegalovirus, adenovirus, picoRNA virus, VZV. So a lot of uh, uh, things you can use this for, like for vaccines, right? So growth of virus so a lot of the spectrum is very big here so you can grow lot of viruses in this human embryonic lung cell stream okay so human fibroblast human embryonic all these are secondary diploid cell lines they can divide 10 to 50 times before they undergo senescence death okay so now let us move on to the continuous cell line okay this is actually an image of the human lung fibroblast cell line HLF, okay. Now let's move on to continuous cell lines, guys. So we are looking at continuous cell lines now. Pay attention here. Continuous cell lines, okay. These are actually derived from cancerous cell lines. They are immortal, capable of indefinite growth. They possess a haploid chromosome, altered haploid chromosome they have. So these are haploid, please write that down. They are cancerous cells, they are immortal, 
they are haploid okay then what else they are easy to maintain by uh, serial subculturing for indefinite division so they'll be indefinite divisions they are immortal they are not going to die they'll die they divide how many ever times you want right this is the reason why continuous cell lines are most widely used cell lines okay currently all this um, organ explant animal inoculation and all gone cell line is the main that they use nowadays okay so basically common examples let us see so they they are immortal you can they will divide for indefinitely you understood that right so examples you have hela h e l a hela cell line okay hela means uh, human um, human carcinoma of cervix cell line so they are taking cancerous cells from humans and using it to culture virus interesting so hela cell line human carcinoma of cervix cell line then you have uh, h e p hyphen 2 HEP hyphen two. This is a cell line. HEP two cell line. So basically, this is a human epithelioma of larynx cell line, widely used for uh, RSV, adenoviruses, and HSV. What is RSV? Respiratory syncytial virus. That is okay. So for that, you can use uh, this HEP hyphen two. So from where is this coming? From the larynx, right? Larynx. This is coming from where? Cervix. right from carcinoma cervix it's not some simple cervix uh, thing from carcinoma cervix carcinoma of cervix cell line this is epithelioma of larynx cell line so you should understand epithelioma means it is neoplasm correct then you have kb cell line from nasopharynx carcinoma of nerof nasopharynx then you have mccoy cell line from the synovial carcinoma then uh, vero cell line vero cell line is like the vervet monkey kidney cell line used for rabies vaccine production oh wow vero cell line vervet monkey kidney cell line used for rabies vaccine production then you have the bhk cell line baby hamster kidney cell line i wonder what the carcinoma here is baby hamster kidney cell line okay So these two vero cell line is vervet monkey kidney cell line and BHK is baby hamster kidney cell line. No mention of carcinoma word is there in the textbook. Okay. So this was about um, the types of cell line, guys. So we have finished the three types of cell lines: primary cell lines, secondary diploid cell lines, and continuous cell lines. So we are done with a lot of things, but still there is more, guys. we have to still cover uh, how to detect how to detect the viral growth so detection of viral growth you have to see the cytopathic effect viral interference heme adsorption direct immuno immunofluorescence assay immunoperoxidase staining electron microscopy virus gene detection so so much is there so let us continue in the next video for the detection of viral growth in the cell culture So if you are wanting to study about cytopathic effects which is a very important topic you please come for the next video we will read the cytopathic effects there okay bye bye